What is up race fans and welcome to a wet Spa Francochamps here in the Ardennes Mountains for the 2022 Belgian Grand Prix qualifying. We're back after the heat of the summer break to some wet conditions here. The drivers will be slapping on some intermediate tires to go around for three qualifying sessions, hopefully towards at, by the end of the day. And here's their practice report for the 2022 Belgian Grand Prix. And Kido Watanabe comes back with a good start, but the McLarens also look very pacey, but Sonoda hoping to regain some of the form he showed at the end of the end of the first half of the season is struggling yet again through these sessions. And so the Japanese drivers are going to have to build up that confidence again, especially if a wet qualifying session looking ahead for all the other drivers. Yuki Sonoda though stepped it around in practice three though with a good signs on the dry third in the pecking order. However, with the wet setup, it's back to bases, back to square one for all these drivers who this will be their first time running in the wet all weekend. Here's a practice setup for Watanabe. He's going to be risking it with a dry setup. And there was some weight redistribution, weight reduction upgrades. There was a failure on the weight redistribution side. However, it all came together along with a fuel efficiency upgrade. And then Toyota now is fourth in the pecking order, having pipped Aston Martin. And here goes Watanabe. It's so wet around here. Breaking early into the bus stop chicane, going right and left and gently easing the car and the throttle to make sure he doesn't spin it around and he makes it across the line. Where's that time going to put him? He's going to put him fourth overall. And he goes Watanabe, a little more audacious on the break, but it is a little drier on the track. But he goes a little deep into the bus stop chicane, going left a little wide from the Toyota driver. He loses some time, so he's not going to gain on this lap. And where's it going to put him? They only put him 13th. Yuki Sonoda pips him to 11th. So the Japanese driver does look better in the wet. However, the dry tires could be ready for Q2 as the session, as the rain starts to lessen around Spa. And Watanabe down through um, the second sector. Now entering the third sector very fast. And oh, he loses it! He loses it! He breaks the front wing! Watanabe now has only one lap to really get a representative lap time in. Can he get across the line? He will get across the line to set up a second lap if this doesn't work out for him. As he opens the DRS and crosses the line, where's that put him? P5. And here goes Keita Watanabe barreling down into Blanchimal. He's not gaining any time, so he's going full beans into its corner, riding the curb, and oh, he spins it again! He spins it again, he manages to catch the car a little better. Not as much severe front wing damage this time around, but, and no severe damage to the car itself, so he will be able to participate in Q3. So, relief for him, however, Wat Yuki Sonoda's out, and shock horror, Valtteri Bottas is out on the medium compound tire. Watanabe barreling into bus, the bus stop chicane yet again. He's very, very, as the session goes on and as he gets more confident, he's slowly edging his braking zone a little more as he crosses the line, but he doesn't improve. He's up by 7 tenths, barreling into the bus stop chicane. Very, very late on the brakes for Watanabe. He's really gunning. He's hoping to finally get that pole position that he's been look, seeking all season. He crosses the line, P5. Up by about a tenth of a second through the bus stop chicane. He gets on the power. He's a little hesitant though, but he's up by two tenths. Now, where's it going to put him? And it's only really going to put him fourth overall. The McLarens have a very good qualifying session, but Lewis Hamilton, coming back from the summer break, rejuvenated, takes pole position and looks to, to really put some fire back into that championship charge. This is a historic track. This is a fan favorite track. Welcome to the Spa Francochamps circuit here in the Belgian countryside in the Arden Mountains for the 2022 Belgian Grand Prix. This circuit has held, had historic races since its very inception on the Formula One calendar, including this is where a young Michael Schubacher started his career in 1991. And let's see what our drivers can do around this circuit. And here we go, one of the longest laps of the Formula One calendar, yet containing some of the most historic turns. Eau Rouge and Radion, very, very historic and very fan well loved a corner. And the Camel Straight, where we can see some great overtakes into Lake Calm. And here we go, here is the starting grid. Lewis Hamilton on pole position, looking to put a little bit more fire into his championship charge. However, Keito Watanabe up and, up and forth. The Toyota has been looking a little better in his hands, but his teammate Yuki Tsunoda is down the grid. So what can Keito Watanabe do on his own against the two McLarens ahead of him that separate him from the, from the win? Let's see what he can do. And this is your starting grid for the 2022 Belgian Grand Prix here in Spa. Lewis Hamilton takes our first pole position after the summer break with Lando Norris on the front row, making it a British front row. All British front row. Let's see what they can do. Daniel Ricciardo third and Keita Watanabe starts P4. Max Verstappen fifth and Charles Leclerc sixth. Our championship leader, we're hoping, and Verstappen to get higher. Vettel seventh is Perez eighth. Alonso ninth and Carlos Sainz tenth is a Spaniard. 
a row with Stroll, oh, Gasly, Bottas, down the order. And after poor qualifying, it's Noda 14th, Juvenazzi 15th, Raikkonen 16th, Mick Schumacher 17th, and George Russell starting 18th place. Marino Sato 19th, Ma Nikita Mazepin 20th, Latifi 21st, and Esteban Ocon down the grid after a full new engine will be starting in last place. Let's see what our drivers can do around this circuit, and let's see how daring they go into Eau Rouge. Five red lights, the driver's raring to go. You can hear the engines roar. We're back after a summer the summer break. Let's see what we can do. It's lights out and away we go. It's a good start for Lewis Hamilton. It's a good start for Max Verstappen trying to get around Watanabe. Watanabe's looking to see if he can get by both papaya cars. Down into a source. Gets the inside line and manages to get ahead of both of the McLarens. Daniel Ricardo pips over passes Lando Norris who's been falling down the grid and now Ricardo in the slipstream heading down into Eau Rouge up Radion you have to be pretty gutsy to go flat out through that corner and now Ricardo is in the slipstream down to Kemmel straight on Watanabe Watanabe defends the ins out the line the racing line and here goes Lando Norris down the inside benefiting off the slipstream and the pause and the defense from Watanabe's defense and Watanabe seals the position he's up into P2 but with a very fast McLaren and Lando Norris barreling down behind him he has to be on his guard and here goes Lando Norris through Eau Rouge and up Radion and he gets a beautiful exit he's barreling down on Watanabe DRS deployed on this lap but he doesn't look like he's even need the DRS. He's looking at look at that speed down the Camel straight. Gets the move done well before the late Kanshi came. Watanabe edges for a move around the outside, but, but Lando Norris defends the position so well. So Watanabe is forced down at the P3. Is that Mick? And that's Mick Schumacher in the Haas pulling off to the side of the road, and the son of the man who's. Formula One debut was on the circuit back in 1991 is out of the Belgian Grand Prix. Let's look at the replay. Let's see exactly what happens. It just looks like the engine just gives up. It, oh yeah, it does. There's smoke billowing out of that engine and down Blanchiment. That is definitely not a place you want the engine to go as it's pretty flat out through there. And Mick Schumacher is going to be very disappointed. <laughs> and that is a very dejected Mick Schumacher. Not what you want to see. And now he's, here comes... Okay, watch him, like, barreling down the Lando Norris, down into Rivage, trying to see what he can do. And he's closing in, heading down into No Name Corner, rides a bit of curb, and oh, he loses the back end, he's going to go! He wedges the Pirelli barrier through No Name Corner, and that's going to open up the door for Daniel Ricciardo. Does he dare to make a move? Down into Pouin, he does. That is an audacious move for Daniel Ricciardo. Kid Watanabe is forced wide, and he's off the podium. Let's look at the replay. You can see Watanabe just rides too much of that exit curb on the outside heading to no name. And that's a very elevated corner. Very easy to lose the back end. Here goes Watanabe on the slipstream of Daniel Ricciardo into Blanchemont. Down into the bus stop chicane. A big late dive bomb from the Toyota driver. He cuts the chicane slightly, goes over the curb. Daniel Ricciardo will be fighting that probably on the radio. But that is an audacious dive bomb from Kato Watanabe. Let's see the move that... Watanabe made on the King of the Late Breakers. A bit of a usurpation here, I guess you could say. And he goes very deep. Just manages to keep it in within, I guess you could say. And then Ricardo's going to be very mad, especially considering that Watanabe does cut him off. Down into the bus stop chicane. And Lewis Hamilton. Is he entering the pit lane? No, he's not. Yes, he is. He is. And Lando Norris as well. So Watanabe inherits the lead of the Grand Prix. And hopefully can he edge a gap to everyone behind as he seems to be going a little longer on his soft compound tires. Entering a pit lane goes Watanabe a lap later, and then would, if, I, if I'm to guess, while the others went, went for the hard compound tires, Toyota's trying to edge it a bit, see if they can make it to the end on a pair, set of medium tires by going later into the race. Let's see what Watanabe can do as he enters the pit lane with Sebastian Vettel and Sergio Perez behind, making their pit stops as well. This has got to be a good one for the Toyota boys and girls, and it's a very good stop from them, a two-second stop in the blocks, and that is a brilliant pit stop as he and rejoins the tracks back in p3 can he get ahead of daniel ricardo on the hard compound tires and he does very good pit stop and now he's set the chase after lando norris carlos Sainz through late con oh then no that's another ferrari powered car out of the grand prix let's look at it down late con it seems that just like it, it's a very similar in the schumachers a long straight on the circuit the engine just gives up so this is just a a characteristic we can expect from the Ferrari powered teams that there is going to be some engine wear, some engine reliability issues faced at this part of the season. Oh, ah. 
Watanabe is closing down on Lando Norris. He's been tailing him for almost eight laps now. However, Lando Norris is just within the slipstream ahead of, of Lewis Hamilton and almost like a mini DRS train. Although Lando Norris is on the harder compound tire compared to Watanabe, he's being dragged along by the superior pace that Hamilton's been showing all race and Watanabe he just can't get close enough for a move because Lando Norris is benefiting off that DRS slipstream from Lewis Hamilton which is infuriating for Watanabe and now Watanabe on the penultimate lap what is he looking for he's going late on the brakes he's stashed, stashed the throttle he goes way too deep into the bus stop chicane and that might have been a bit of a desperate move to try and get the overtake done could he have waited until uh, the camel straight he might have been able to but it hadn't been working all laps so he was a little desperate to try and get the move done a little too far too late. Lewis Hamilton, a brutal return after the summer break. The Mercedes driver looking to reignite his title fight. Crosses the line. And that's... Oh! And that's Kino Watabi snapping the back end across the line. But the Lewis Hamilton takes the win of the Belgian Grand Prix. And Lando Norris a great podium from the British driver after a disappointing British Grand Prix. And Kato Watanabe will take the podium. But he would have wanted something a little better. He's out of the title fight. But that doesn't mean he can't hope to push his team and himself up in both championships. Yuki Tsunoda out of the points. And Valtteri Bottas as well. A disappointing race from a man who looked so on form heading into the summer break. And Max Verstappen, not a very good performance from him as well. Which means that him and Lewis, Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton are tied at 165 points at the top of the championship. Valtteri Bottas 13 points behind him as, as well. So it's going to look like the title fight is just reignited between Verstappen and Hamilton. And, and Mercedes extended a lead over Red Bull Racing. McLaren, Pip, Ferrari. That's a beautiful way to return after the summer break. And hopefully at the Dutch Grand Prix we can see just another thrilling show. But that's it from us here at Spa-Francorchamps. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.